So you know the basics of Figma components, but how are professional web designers actually using them in real life projects? Well, hey, I'm Finn and I'm a web designer at Antler. And on this channel, I teach you real life web design with projects I'm working on. Now, you're probably looking around YouTube at tutorials about how to do, how to build Figma components. And while that's really useful, the next step is for you to actually see how a professional is using that you know, skill in their real life projects. You know, a lot of these designers on YouTube don't actually work full-time as designers, they're full-time YouTubers. But the cool thing about this channel is that I'm sharing what I'm doing at my day job as a web designer with you guys here when I get the chance. So if you're interested in more videos like that, feel free to subscribe below. Now, back to the video, we're talking about components today because components are frankly one of the most powerful things in your designer's toolkit. Now I'm already assuming you know the basics of components. For example, that by right clicking in Figma, it will allow you to create the component and that you can also create copies of this component called instances. And any changes made on the main component will carry through to the instances across your website. You probably also know that you can create component variants where you can add different colors, maybe even new elements to create component variants. Now components are so important to understand. And when I was a beginner, I actually hated components. I would create a component, then later on try and rearrange something inside it. It wouldn't let me do that, obviously. I would rage quit and then detach that component as fast as possible. But as I've matured as a designer, spent more years in the industry, I've come to love components. And actually they're really, really useful. And actually now that I've started using components in my workflow, I can design 10 times faster. And that's exactly what I wanna show you today. So let's just take a look here. So right here in Figma, you can see we've got um, a bunch of different pages here. We've got hero headers, navigation, we've got call to actions. We've even got, you know, content sections here. Um, this is just me organizing all the different components, all the different sections into the right Figma pages. This means that it's really easy to go and find a component rather than having them all on one page. It's a lot faster. Now as well, just down below here, I've got some foundations like typography, colors, and buttons. This kind of thing is more like design systems. So I wanna focus on the component library here. But basically, I have all the most common sections for the Antler marketing website saved in this file. And because this is saved and published as a library, whenever I create a new uh, page file, basically, I can drag and drop these components in. Let me show you how that works. So I've got a new example of the page here. And let's just say i am been working at my desk at Antler and someone's messaged me in Slack saying, hey, we need this web page live next week. So all I do is I drag and drop the web page. Let me show you how this is gonna work. So I'm here in my file, just a blank file. I'm gonna to go to assets and I'm actually going to add a new library. So I can come here to browse team libraries. And if I scroll down here, this is my Antler website component library. So what I can do is add this to the file and now we can see it pops up here in our libraries. So when I click out here, I can actually go to my assets into here and I've got all the components that I've already designed in my library and I can access them right here from the side panel. This turns page building or page designing rather into a drag and drop experience. Let me show you. So first I wanna start off with a hero header. So I will go into header here and you can see that just like this, if it's a location, I can drag and drop this onto the page like this. Now I'm gonna make sure that this component here is gonna fill the container and that this is going to hug contents. And let's go ahead and drag in maybe a blog section here. So we've got some articles. Again, I just literally drag and drop that just like that. For container, you know, maybe we also wanna have an FAQ section here. So drag and drop that in there. Same thing, fill container. And literally, as you can see here, we are just building a page by dragging and dropping. Let's go to our content now. Let's go to content, right. content section one. Maybe I drag and drop that up here. And let's just say we want to have finally, um, 
maybe another content section to go here. Some stats to go under here like this. We want to add our call to action here underneath. And finally, let's just add in our footer. Just drag this down to the bottom. Oops, drag it to the bottom. Set it to be the full width container. And just like that, we've dragged and dropped a high fidelity web page like this. Now, I would obviously do this a bit more uh, with care and I would make sure the, the colors are right here, but pretty much we've just built a web page in minutes here. And the design looks great even though we've done this in like a minute. This is the whole benefit and the whole purpose of using component libraries is that they speed up your design workflow by 10 times. Now you might be wondering like, okay Finn, you, you got these components from somewhere, where did they come from? Well, that's the thing is all this time that we save by dragging and dropping our web pages, that frees up time to design more components. Because often we might get a section brief coming in or rather like a web page brief and there's a specific section that doesn't exist in our component library. Well, that's great because now I've got tons of time to sit down and really make this design beautiful for this new section. I'm gonna spend half a day designing this new slider section, let's just say. And then once I've finished, it gets added to the component library to be reused on future projects. So this way you're creating a component library bit by bit. You're almost treating it like a garden. You're, you're growing it slowly by adding it components over time. And what this means is your component library is gonna then evolve with not just the content needs of your company, but also with potentially web design trends or the way design is evolving with best practices. You know, when I started working at Antler, I would build pages from scratch. I would wireframe them. I would then turn that wireframe into a high fidelity design. Now I just drag and drop them because it's way more efficient. And you guys might think that, you know, the pro designers, the most senior designers, they're spending all day designing, you know, web pages. Actually, we're using components. And it is true that I've designed these components, but I only design once. I don't redesign a new page every single time I create it because that would just be super inefficient. So here's what I want to communicate to you in this video. Invest some time designing a component library up front because you will actually save exponentially more time going forwards. Not only do you save more time, but actually the pages that you do build are guaranteed to be well designed because if you design that section component the first time correctly, it looks beautiful, then it's always going to be beautiful. You just drag it on, you know, it's good to go. Now you might be thinking here, well, Okay, this is great, Finn, but you work full-time at a company. I'm a freelancer. Well, there's actually a second benefit to using component libraries. You can sell them to your clients. I mean, you've just seen how valuable, how much time this saves for me, right? What about if you could sell a component library to a client? Now, this is a really great way to bump up the price of your projects if you're a freelancer. Let's just say you're doing a project for like 5K or let's just say 10K, it's a decent sized project. Or well, you're gonna say, well, for an extra 3K, you can get on my premium package, which includes a drag and drop component library, okay? And all you have to do is save the current, you know, sections that you've already designed as components, organize them like I've done in, you know, different pages, maybe add a few variants, maybe design a few extra components there to make it look bigger, but that might take you a couple of days and you can add 3K to your budget just by doing that minimal work but it's actually really valuable for your client because then they can hand that off to another designer who can build web pages and pump them out really fast. So that was kind of a bit of an overview of the practicality of components and really it takes the form of component libraries. You use the component library and contribute to it, build it out over time and it's going to become the biggest asset in your designer's toolkit. So hopefully that was a useful video for you and I always try and make videos when I get the chance. Work has been very busy recently, but if you're still here, thank you for staying to the end and I'll see you in the next video. If you're looking to learn more about design, I just made a video, like a complete course on how to build out your LinkedIn profile for a designer because this stuff doesn't even matter if you don't have clients, right? So check out that video about how to build out your LinkedIn profile for designers and I'll see you in the next video.